God ain't doing nothing, amen. But now looking back, I can see, amen, where God's hand was in every bit of it, amen. And he was doing some things. We're going to be in Mark chapter number 5 tonight. Mark chapter number 5. Uh, the Lord's touched our heart with this passage for about, about two weeks, amen. And matter of fact, we're studying along these lines uh, when, when it led us to preach that message on depression last week. Amen. We were studying along these lines when that came up. And uh, so we pray that God would help us from this passage tonight. It very well could be part two of, of what we preached about that, but it's going to be a little different direction. Amen. Uh, the Bible said here in Mark chapter number five, we'll read in verse number 25 or verse 24. No, it's 25. He said, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. Can you imagine that? 12 years, amen. That ain't 12 minutes, that ain't 12 months, that ain't 12 days, 12 weeks, 12 years. That's a long time. When I read that, amen, sometimes we read over these things and we just read it, but really this was what was going on in somebody's life. Amen. See, when we read the Word of God, we need to understand that this is dealing with people's lives. Amen. When we preach, when we teach, when we visit, when we go places, we must understand the ultimate thing is we dealing with people's lives. Right. Amen. And although you may not understand it and you may not see it, there's a God in heaven that does. You don't understand it, amen, but neither do they a lot of times. He said here, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians. A lot of folks in church, amen, going through that cycle today. Amen. I'm going to say this right here. I'm not against taking pills, amen. I'm not against taking medicine. Don't misunderstand. But the pill's not really the answer. Amen. See, go to the doctor today, they'll shove two or three in you. If that don't work, you come back and they'll shove two or three more in you. Amen. And before you know it, they've got your body all out of whack. And it's just started messing with your mind. And you can't function, amen. I've dealt with that in days gone by, amen. Uh, with people that say that I'm saved by the grace of God, that think the pill is the answer to everything. And they go to many doctors and they suffer many things, amen. And now they're laying up in bed most of the time and can't even hardly function. Amen. And then you know what? They'll get the idea. They'll find two or three of them in the same church or in the same family, and their pill ain't working for them, so they'll swap it out. Amen. Amen. You know what? That's nothing more than drug dealing. Amen. Well, amen. A lot of folks don't agree with that. Amen. But it's still right. Amen. If you need it, amen, go to the doctor. Amen. It ain't your case to go giving your pills that God prescribed you to everybody else because they having those symptoms. Amen. All right. I ain't no, I am not. Amen. Listen, I'm not against getting some help when you need some help. Amen. amen. But I want to tell you, there's way too much of that going on, and it's got people's lives in a mess. I'm convinced the reason most people go to the doctor anyway is because they want another pill. Amen. Well, that'll go over well. Amen. He said this, amen, got to have another one. Uh, they'll do fine till they run out, then they've got to have another doctor. Amen. Amen. But I want to tell you, friend, the answer's not in the pill. The answer's in the Lord, amen, and he's able. Uh, God, he's still the great physician, and my friend, he just with one touch, amen, is all it'll take. It's one touch, amen, from above. And no, I'm not against, amen, getting help when you need it, amen. Uh, but understand, you ought to really need it, amen. You ought to really got to have it. Can't do without it, amen. God's got to do something, amen. He said this, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had. Uh, can I all go say something else too? God won't ever do anything for you you can do for yourself. Hey, a lot of folks, amen, that can do some things for themselves that's waiting on God to do it. God ain't going to do it as long as you can. Amen. As long as we can fix it, don't expect God to fix it. Amen. Is that right tonight? Too many people, amen, sitting around waiting on God and they acting like going to church and reading your Bible and prayer is supposed to be some magic potion or that all of a sudden is going to work magic in your life when God sat back saying, hey, there's some things you could do amen. and if you'll do these things, amen, then I'll do this, amen. Uh, so we ought to get to that place where we, see, this woman didn't sit back, amen, and wait on God. She had tried a lot of things. She had suffered a lot of things and spent everything she had. Now look, Amen. It was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, 
came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she had been healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately anointed himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitudes thronging thee. And sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this. See, there had been many people touched him that day. But there was one that was a little bit different. Amen. There was one that touched Jesus that day that was a little bit different from everybody else. And I'm convinced the same goes true today. Amen. Though there's many thronging him. Amen. And the multitudes are coming. The difference, amen, is this woman believed. Amen. She trusted, amen, that if she could just touch him, amen. I'm convinced, amen, today that's the issue. Look what he goes on to say. Let me find a place here. The Bible said in verse 31, And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude strong in thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what, what was done in her, came and fell before him, listen, and told him all the truth. When God does something for you, you'll tell it. Amen. Amen. When God does something for you, you won't be ashamed of it. Amen. Amen. When the Lord shows up and ministers and meet the needs of your heart, you'll want to tell about it. Amen. Somewhere, somebody is going to know. Amen. And he said unto her, daughter. Boy, that's good. Amen. Amen. Daughter. Amen. If I'm not mistaken, that's the only place in the Word of God where he says that. Amen. The only person he says that to. I may be confusing that with something else I study, but he says, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight for your word. Thank you, God, for your goodness. We ask you, Lord, that you'd show up in this place tonight. Lord, you'd minister and speak to our hearts. God, do that work that only you can. Lord, I pray that you'd fill us with your spirit. Help us, Lord, to preach in the power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to get our text from verse 26 tonight. The Bible said it had suffered many things uh, of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. Amen. And we want to preach on this thought uh, that she lived in desperation but she didn't die there. Amen. Uh, she lived in desperation, uh, but she didn't die there. Amen. Brother Holt, uh, this woman, amen, was in desperation. Amen. Uh, this woman, amen, I looked that word desperation up, amen, and it means a state of despair, amen. Can you imagine in her life, Brother Brad, having an issue of blood uh, for 12 long years, amen. Uh, she had suffered, amen, many things, uh, many physicians, amen. Uh, she was in one doctor's office and out of it, uh, wasn't along, amen, about the time uh, they said, just do this, amen, and you're going to get better, amen. A little while later, she found herself in the same condition, amen, uh, going into another doctor's office, amen, and saying, I got to have some help. Uh, but you know, eventually she realized, amen, uh, that this wasn't the answer, amen, uh, that this wasn't going to help, amen. And Brother Ty, she had spent all that she had, and she wound up in a state of despair. Uh, she wound up in hopelessness, amen, in distress, in anguish, in agony, in torment, and it gave grounds, amen, uh, for ha her to have no hope, amen. In other words, amen, can you imagine, had her 12 years of going through the same thing, uh, uh, the cycle had continued as it always had, and nothing had got better for her, uh, but it all got worse. Can you imagine uh, when she got to the place in her life, Brother Perry, uh, she thought, man, this is hopeless. I can't go on this way. I can't see another doctor, amen. Uh, the doctor don't have the answer. 
answer, amen. I've got an issue of blood and they done tried everything uh, that they had. I want you to notice something about this woman. Uh, you think about it, you may uh, be in a state of uh, despair tonight. Uh, you may be in a place of desperation in your life, amen. Uh, but you don't have to stay there, amen. And you don't have to die that way, amen. Uh, you're not the first one uh, that found your life in hopelessness, amen. And in despair and agony. And brother Ty, you won't be the last. Uh, uh, but there's a God in heaven, amen, uh, that says you don't have to stay there and you don't have to die in that condition, amen, as long as God is still on the throne, amen. Uh, notice what I find here. Uh, you'll think about this way. I want you to think about this. Your situation, whatever it is, uh, could change at in one instance, amen. I mean, whatever it might be, I mean, just a circumstance in your life, it could be changed in just a moment. I thought about, amen, Brother Josh this morning in the prayer room. He says, you know what? Living with Miss Desmond is like living with a total different woman. Amen. Uh, you know what happened, amen? Uh, somebody was living in desperation, amen. Uh, what I heard going on on that back pew the other yeah. Sunday morning, uh, somebody had got desperate, amen. Uh, somebody realized, amen, I ain't going to die in this place. I'm not going to die in this condition, amen. I got to get up from where I'm at. I got to find God, amen. And you know what I told him? It's amazing how just touching heaven one time will change everything, amen. That's all it takes. It don't take a whole lot. Uh, just getting through to God, amen, and getting God on the scene and letting God work it out. Amen. And God's able. Amen. Oh, yes, he can. Amen. I'm telling you what, I ain't seen so much smiling going on back there, and I ain't know her before. Amen. But I do know. Amen. I seen a young girl. Amen. Coming through doors with her head down. Amen. I had no smile, had no joy. And that said, I'm saved by the grace of God. And then all of a sudden, touch heaven. And I want to tell you, friend, how the lights come on. Amen. And realize, thank God, it ain't what it used to be, amen. amen. But because of him, he's able tonight, amen. amen. And this lady here, she's living in a place of, de of distress, amen. Uh, she's living in desperation. I want you to notice something about her disease. In verse 25, it says she had an issue of blood for 12 years. Now, can you think about this disease with me a minute? What does it represent to you and I? It represents anything in our life that's causing us to live in desperation. It, I mean, you know what I find, Brother Perry? It might be a sickness, as in this woman's case. It might be suffering, amen, as any others go through. It might be somebody, amen, that's causing you to live in desperation, amen. Uh, do you know what I find out? It could be just sorrow of heart, amen, uh, because of circumstances in your life and things didn't go the way uh, you thought it would, amen. You know, when we get saved, uh, uh, we take our lives sometimes and we plan it out and we expect it to be one way and we expect everything to work out good all the time. Then all of a sudden, uh, uh, the night falls, amen, and it gets dark and things come flooding in our life uh, that we didn't expect. And it'll throw us off course and get us out of the will of God. Amen. It don't take much. Amen. Uh, Brother Perry mentioned this morning, all it takes, amen, is not reading and not praying and not being faithful to God as you should. And you can be far removed from where you used to be. Far removed. Amen. And then find yourself. Can you imagine this woman? Has a time in her life where all was well. Hell's a time, amen, she wasn't faced with this disease. But now out of nowhere for 12 years long, it showed up one day. It showed up and she thought, well, this will go away. But you know what? It didn't. I'm telling you, it's a disease, amen. Can I tell you something about her discomfort? Look verse 26. The Bible said, and, he suffered, and, and had suffered many things of many positions, and it spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but grew worse. Oh, can you imagine? 
I'm telling you, the disease was there. Or the problem was there. And she kept going to the doctors expecting things to get better. How about well, she found a surprise? How things didn't get better. It got worse, amen. How sometimes in your life, how things will get worse how before it gets better. How so you better mark it down. How that God, amen, is there in the bad times how just like he is the good times. Amen. amen. He said, you know what? Oh, I find this woman here, she's going through it. I'm telling you, she's discomforted. Oh, she's seen many positions and it got worse as she went. Hey, so many folks in that condition today. Man, they running here and there. Hey, trying to find answers, amen. And I pray for somebody, I hope you do. But I want to tell you, you might be looking in the wrong place. Hey, you may be looking in the wrong place. How you may I be looking where how there's no answer to be found. I want to tell you, friend, how she was looking in all the wrong places for the help she needed. Oh, she was. She thought the doctors was going to take care of this. I want to tell you something. You can see all the doctors. Amen. You can see all the psychotherapists and the psychiatrists you want to. Uh, but I want to tell you what they're going to do. Uh, before you ever go, they're going to treat your symptoms and they're not going to treat the problems, amen. I'm telling you, there's a God in heaven uh, that is the great physician uh, that's able to reach down and diagnose the problem and deal with the problem, amen. Oh, he's got a way of getting it out. I'm telling you, friend, how don't you ever get desperate? Oh, you know what? That's when people get desperate, sometimes they'll do desperate things. Amen. You know why? Because they really truly hunt some help. Right. But the truth is, if they was hunting some help, had the feet of Jesus, like they hunted everywhere else, you know what they could do? They could find some answers. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you what, I had somebody got up off that back road the other day, found some answers. Amen. 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 You know what? Wasn't no preacher back there with no Bible. Amen. Oh no. Amen. You know what I discovered? Preacher can't help you all the time. There's going to be things going on in your life and places, amen, in difficult times. I can't help you with it. I pray for it. But it's going to take you getting along with God and letting God do a work of grace in your life and giving you some help. Amen. Oh, his help's lasting help. Amen. Think about this, amen. This woman, her discomfort, amen. Uh, you know what I imagine? It caused her difficulty going to sleep. Hey, some folks, amen. I mean, is that right, amen? They're so desperate. I'm telling you, they can't sleep. Uh, they can't fall asleep. And when they do, it's not good sleep. And they sleep all the time. Uh, when they can't go to sleep, and they're always miserable, and they're always worn out, and they're always complaining, and always bitter. Uh, you know what? The answer is found in the Lord Jesus, amen. And in Him alone, uh, we got to get past all these other things. And start looking in the right place. Oh, do you know what? Oh, you, I thought about it this way, amen. You know what? Sometimes when you get to the place where, brother, it's desperation, you'll start weeping uncontrollably for no reason. Have you ever been there? Man, when this thing's weighing on you, it's pressing you down. And then every time you think about it, all you can do, the tears will begin to roll. Right. Boy, and it's real. You think I'm preacher making fun of? Oh no, it's real. Play. I'm gonna tell you, it's real. Hey, something there that you know is not right, and it's causing you some difficult times. She was discomforted. Notice her duration, amen. In verse 25, for 12 years, in the same position. How can you imagine her for 12 years long, in and out, doing everything she could? How but things got worse? I want to tell you, sometimes God will let you go through it, and He don't immediately show up and do something about it. I'm telling you what, Jesus could have showed up in this woman's life at any moment. Uh, but you know what? He let her go through this 12 years. Can you imagine? Sounds a lot like Lazarus when he died, amen. And his sister said, come on, go get Jesus. And he delayed, amen. He could have came prior. But you know what? Sometimes God will do it for his glory, amen. So that when he does show up, amen, he's going to get glory out of it. Oh, yes. Oh, he wants to get glory out of your life. You know what brings glory in his life? 
when he sees you pressing on in spite of your heartache, uh, pressing on in spite of your heartbreak, uh, pressing on uh, in spite of your sickness, amen. I want to tell you, friend, hey, I, I thank God this ransom, amen, comes willing in here uh, quite often, amen, in a bad physical condition. But you know what? I trust in God, amen, uh, that God's going to help her, amen. And by his grace, he has, amen, and will continue to do so. Amen. You know what she'll tell you today? I promise you she'll say, I've seen worse days. Amen. That's right, amen. But you know what? God, amen, touched her a little bit here and a little bit there. Amen. 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 You know what I find this woman? She endured this thing for a long time. You know what I found out? I want you to notice how she was drained. In verse 26, says she had spent all. Can you imagine? She had tried, she had gave everything up to try to find some answers. Can I tell you, friend, that word drain means to run out. It means to leave empty. You want to tell you something? Sometimes you'll go through some things that will leave you empty. Amen. It, it will deprive you of strength and vitality. It's something that's draining. You know what it'll do? It'll work on you both physically and emotionally. Amen. Oh, well, you know why? That's why some folks stay in the bed all day and can't get up. Amen. Because it's worked on them, amen. It swore them out, amen. They can't take it no more. You know what? It drained her economy, amen. She had spent everything she had. All of her finances was gone. There's going to be some situations in your life that it's going to drain your economy. It's going to take everything you got. But I want to tell you, Job lost everything he had, but God still blessed him, amen. Oh, and his latter end was greater than his beginning end, amen. Yes. You know what? I like those scriptures, amen. He gives us plenty of examples. But you know what? She was drained of all of her energy. Some situations you go through will drain the life out of you. Amen. All your energy is gone. You ever met this crowd, amen, that, stay, that stays in this kind of mode all the time, desperation. They've tried everything. Now the life's been sucked out of them. All their energy is gone. They have no desire to do the things they know to do. I'm telling you, they can't be a husband. They can't be a wife. They can't be a mama. They can't be a daddy, amen, and because of situations in their life. I want to tell you, friend, there's a God in heaven that can help you. There's a God in heaven that says, hey, I'm still on the throne, and I'm no respecter of persons, and if I've ever helped anybody, I can help you, amen. Oh, yes, he can. Amen. He's able. I want to tell you. But not only that, there's some things you're going to go through that will drain your enthusiasm out of you. I guarantee you there's a time when this first started, she was pretty enthusiastic about getting some help. Bless God, I got a doctor's appointment in the morning. We've been to find some answers. Amen. She's pretty enthusiastic about it. But you know what? Two weeks later, things is the same. All right, this goes on for 12 years. It drained her. You know what? Some things you go through can get you to the point where you do not even feel like you can continue to rise to the occasion. And you've got up every day. And you faced it. It's still there. It's battling you. It's burning you. And you don't even think you can get up anymore. Because it's done drained all your enthusiasm out. You ain't got no get up and want to anymore. Amen. Have you ever been there? I have, amen. When you're so desperate, amen, you don't want to get up and do nothing. Desperation. Amen. This is where she was at. She was drained. Do you know what I find about this woman? In verse 27 and 28, you're going to find she was also determined. She said when she heard of Jesus, boy, business started picking up. All of a sudden, she done tried everything she could. And it only got worse as she went. But when she heard of Jesus, the Bible said, came, notice. Let me give you something here. Jesus didn't come to her. He was just passing by. Sometimes Jesus will pass by, but it's still on you to get up and come to him. 
Amen. Sometimes he'll pass by in the mist. Amen. I'm telling you, when Jesus shows up and passes by, uh, that's when it's time uh, to run and touch the hem of his garment and get some help. Amen. Just because he shows up in this place, he'll let you leave the same way as you came. Yeah. Yes. Right. He'll let you leave like you came, Brother Ty. You know what? When he passes by, you better get up and go. Amen. Amen. Oh, he passed by. The Bible said, and when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. That sounded like somebody of that knew, amen, a little bit about what he had done and what he was able to do. And it saw some things he'd already done. It said, you know what? If I could just, just touch his clothes, I'll be made whole. Amen. When you get to that place, and you, you know what she determined? She determined at her 12 long years, Come on. she said, right. I'm determined in my heart, I'm not going to stay this way. I'm determined in my heart, uh, there's some answers, amen. I can find some help. I can get some help. I can get some help. Uh, but you know what? Uh, she didn't get no help staying where she was at. Uh, she had to get up. Uh, she had to get out of there. Uh, she had to pursue Jesus. Uh, she had to go where he was at. Oh, yes, amen. You know what? She is trying. Let me go on and say this. I think some of us got the idea. Uh, well, I pray. I read my Bible. I go to church. And you seek in prayer. And you seek in Bible reading. Uh, and you seek in church. Uh, but when is the last time you got so determined you realize that's not the answer? Uh, the answer is in the Christ. Amen. I just got to get to him. I got to touch the hem of his garment. I can get some help there. I can get some help there. Nobody ever touched Jesus and lived the same. Amen. Check it out. Amen. Nobody in this book ever touched Jesus and remained the same. All you got to do is get determined uh, that I got to touch Jesus. Oh, yes, I won't tell you whether you ever touch him. Oh, man, it don't take but one time. You know what I found out? In this situation, she didn't have to keep going back. Mm -mm. Amen. 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 She said, if I must may but just touch. And she went behind and touched the hem of his garment. She touched his clothes, Brother Perry. And I want to show you something. What happened here? She said, and straightway, <laughs> the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. You know what? It wasn't no waiting time. Amen. There wasn't no putting on probation to see if you really believed it or not. I won't tell you what. Uh, Jesus knew, amen, when she touched his clothes, Sister Lynn, do you know what? I'm telling you, Jesus perceived, amen, that that virtue had gone out of him. That was that power. Uh, he knew who it was, amen. He knew who had touched him. There was a multitude touching that day. I'm telling you, I didn't see him stopping anywhere. I'm telling you, along the way, as the multitudes thronged him, and the multitudes went after him, and man, they was Folks touching him, uh, you never do see where that bothers him and where any power's gone out of him. Uh, you never see where virtue was gone. Uh, but that one uh, that came by faith uh, and believed that he was the answer and believed that it could, I'm telling you, that virtue went out of him, amen. And you know what? That moment in that instant, a straight way, you know what happened? She was healed. Amen. Straight way. You know what? We are naive if we don't believe that Jesus is still in the healing business. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, there's a God in heaven that can. There's a God in heaven that don't take but one. A touch, amen. All you got to do is get to him. I get in the throne of God. He said, come boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace. You know what I was going to preach on? A finding grace, amen. I'm telling you, friend, you can find grace, amen. You can find grace tonight, amen, to help in time of need. Oh, yes, amen. You know what he found out? This woman here, amen, she had been battling. She got determined. She said, man, I done tried all these other doctors. What about Jesus? Amen. amen. I hear he's the great physician. <laughs> oh, they ain't none other like him. You know what? He don't even have to bring out the prescriptions. Amen. He don't have to say choke these three down three times a day. Amen. All he says, if you can just but touch him. Understand. Don't go out of here saying I'm against you taking medicine. Don't, don't misunderstand. Amen. Amen. 
But I'm telling you, friend, the answer ain't always in the pill bottle. Some folks find out, feel like the answer's in the pill bottle. And when they get up and the bottle's empty, they do fine for 15 days. But they had a 30-day prescription that lasts 15 days. Come on now. Amen. And then they get up one morning and it's gone. They rally that. Then they on the phone calling everybody they know. You got you. you know, listen, that's not the answer. If we spent half as much time seeking Jesus as we did all these other things, we could find some answers. We could find some answers. But I'm convinced we don't spend near the time seeking his face as we do other things. Oh, my friend, I don't know why I'm so on the pills tonight, but I'm telling you what, God's got that on my heart, and I'm here to tell you the answer's not in the pills. Amen. Amen. They're going to depress you. They're going to defeat you. They're going to make you want to give up on life altogether. Oh, it might give you a little high for a little while, but that high's going to run out. And then you're going to start saying, well, that don't help me anymore. Because you know why? It's only a temporal help. It's not a permanent help. Jesus has the answer, amen. amen. She was determined. She said, if I, must, if I may just touch his clothes, I'll be whole. Can I give you this in closing? Her deliverance. Notice what he said in verse 29. You see, she didn't come. This is one time she came and found an answer. She didn't leave this doctor's office without an answer. Amen. Amen. You, you see what I'm saying? Notice what she said. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she had been healed of the plague. And Jesus immediately anointed him, said the virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throng in thee. And sayest thou, Who touched me? And that's what the crowd always says. Amen. They said, and he looked round about to see her that had done this thing, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her. Can I tell you, sometimes you leave out of the doctor's office, you know what, many a days, 12 years. 12 years she'd leave out with another prescription, and that was what all of her hope was in. For 12 years she had faced disappointment and hoping, Brother Ty, but this Bible said right here, when she touched him, knowing, knowing. See, it wasn't no hope anymore, Brother Terry, as this world defines hope. It was a hope as we define hope in the Word of God, a steadfast assurance yes. that something had happened. Notice what he said. Knowing what was done in her came and fell before him and told him all the truth, all the truth. I'd like to be in on that conversation. <laughs> she began to tell him, Lord, for 12 years now, I've hurt. For 12 years now, I've sought to find some help. And I've not been able to find any. But I want to tell you all the truth tonight. I just found some. <laughs> And I know that it's real. Boy, that's when it gets good, when you know what's done in you. And fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her daughter, Can I ask you tonight, are you a daughter? Or are you a son? Amen. <laughs> he might have a few words for you. Amen. He said, by faith had made thee whole. Amen. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Can I tell you tonight, Brother Brad, that it didn't take but one, one instance of getting to Jesus. And he said, I just got news for you. Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Where's your faith at tonight? When you bow, when you get to him, see, she didn't go and touch him. She didn't have the attitude as I've tried everything else. 
I may as well give him one try. I may as well give him opportunity. She said, you know what? I've been trying these things for years. But if I can touch him, <laughs> that's where my answer is at. She had faith, Brother Perry, when she came. I'm convinced today that too many of us is touching him without any faith. We're holding on to all these other things instead of going with him and touching him with a touch of faith whereby we can be made whole. Will you stand with us tonight? We'll get Brother Abner to come play. Maybe Brother Perry come lead us in a song tonight. You may be here tonight.